just a brief introduction to PUCL since many of you have probably not come to other PUCL meetings and I think Mihir will add to it later. But it's a uh, People's Union for Civil Liberties has been a group that's been active nationally for many years. And in Bombay, the chapter that is here, some of us have been working on various issues related to civil liberties. Uh, public meetings have been organized, fact findings have been done, uh, legal actions have been taken and on diverse issues, looking at marginalized people, looking at incarcerated people, looking at environmental issues and there's a whole long list. So I will not go into that, but in case any of you feel so inclined to join PUCL or be aware of PUCL activities, uh, please let us know and we shall keep you in the loop. Because a lot of people ask, why did PUCL get involved in this issue? What is the, traditionally, like PUCL started just after the emergency, the first emergency. So traditionally, uh, Any civil liberty organization, when it started, like when PUCL started, is seen as a calling to account the state. Maybe that uh, the state is accountable for A, B, C, D things, and, and uh, we have to fight against the state. So it's essentially your demands vis-a-vis -vis the state, especially in the context of when the state is violent. When the state is, uh, you know, I mean, there are, there are uh, police atrocities, there are counter deaths. These are the traditional way in which uh, we started, UCL started. Similarly, it started with what is normally known as civil liberties. That is uh, the negative rights given in the constitution. Like, negative in the sense that uh, the state cannot stop you from speaking. State cannot stop you from assembling, state cannot stop you from doing A, B, C, D, etc. etc. the negative rights. But over the years, just as the society changes, the civil liberties movement has also changed, has undergone a change. And uh, so from civil liberties, it progressed to issues such as democratic rights, what are traditionally known as directive principle, right to food, right to education, this, that, and the other, right to work. So it progressed to that. And then it has also progressed to issues which are seen as non-state issues. Violence which is not necessarily perpetrated by the state, but perpetrated at a private level. It was traditionally not a, not a, not a civil liberties agenda, traditionally. And it is in that context that we, uh, uh, we felt that uh, UCL should also be part of this process. Uh, apart from the fact that it is a very, very important issue. And that's why we, we as PUCL uh, decided that, uh, uh, and, and this has been happening, I mean, if you see, uh, there is a recent Supreme Court judge, because traditionally it was believed that, for instance, your right to freedom of speech and expression, right to assemble, etc., under the fundamental rights chapter of the, of the, of the Constitution, is only vis-a-vis -vis the state. But there is a recent judgment about uh, four months back of the Supreme Court which says no, these rights are also available against private parties. Okay. Uh, a, I mean, and so, so things are expanding in that sense, okay, in terms of jurisprudentially. Okay, concretely at the ground level they may not be, but at the jurisprudentially they are expanding. So it was in that context that we decided to take up, uh, 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 be part of this process. 